All right, if you caught the last Eclipse video, I was complaining about a power loss above four or four and a half thousand RPM, like it goes into limp mode. I'll have some clips to throw up. I got it on camera, what it was doing, and also the resulting sound it was making while it was doing it. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I just found what it was. I was suspecting this anyways. If you guys have been watching many of the Eclipse videos uh, more than once, I pointed out this broken, uh, broken sway bar link here. And while I was driving and getting that uh, buzzing, vibrating sound, it sounded like it was coming from the right side. And you can see those rub marks there on the CV shaft on the axle. I turn this well that's as far as it'll turn Let's see if I can get it zoomed in on that for you with a freaking focus you can see where it's uh, come on anyway it's been rubbing on the edge there you can see some shining material there where it's been rubbing and also got lucky here real lucky honestly that it chewed away some of this rubber here Thankfully, it did not bust the clamp, and it has not rubbed a hole through the boot. I mean, this thing's just been flopping around here. It could have absolutely been rubbing a hole through this boot. Thankfully, it was just up here running on rubbing on this. So what I have been suspecting is that vibration is causing the knock sensor to pick up a false knock because it vibrates the whole front end of the car. Um, so I'm still not 100% sure that's the issue, but man, I really hope it is because obviously that thing's been rubbing. It's weird that it only does it at certain RPMs though, so maybe it's rubbing the whole time and then only at a certain RPM does it start to make that vibration which causes it to pull timing because it thinks it's picking up knock. I don't know, but I'm going to yank this thing off of here, go run the crap out of it and see if it stops doing it. Because I mean, other than that, there's got to be something loose, vibrating, buzzing somewhere that's causing this thing to pull, uh, pull timing because it's it thinks it's picking up engine knock from that vibration. It's like buzzing. I could feel it in the floor under my foot. So there's no real doubt in my mind that that's why I'm getting that power loss because the knock sensor is picking it up and think it's, it thinks that the engine is knocking. So it pulls timing to try to save it. I do still have a up and down rough idle, but it quit stalling out on me on the intersection. So that's good. Um, I've noticed, I've been messing around with the uh, mass airflow sensor and the air box under here. Um, a hunch led me to this because I've noticed that, well, first of all, I tried to clean this. And this has a insert here. Carmen Vortex Sensor. And apparently you cannot clean those with the mass airflow sensor spray. So I bought the can of spray to try to clean my mass airflow sensor. Thankfully, I read the warnings on the back said do not use on such and such uh type sensor which this freaking has uh, but i remember that ever since i brought this thing home anytime i shut the hood on it with it running the car like almost stalls out and then and then like kicks back up on its own um so if i and you're not supposed to hit these but if i hit it about like that just right um nine times out of ten it would cause the car to kind of like stall down and fire back up so that explains why every time I shut my hood it's doing that so um, it could be my mass airflow sensor which is technically I guess not a mass airflow sensor it's a Carmen vortex sensor so that might be going bad on me um, so no telling if that is what's causing my uh, idle issue if that's what was causing my stalling out and in intersection issues that I don't currently have anymore or if in like one of my previous videos I posted if it's that um, evap leak that i apparently have according to the code reader anyways let me get this sway bar link uh, arm thingy off of here <laughs> so it's not rubbing on the cv shaft anymore and we'll go run the go run the piss out of her and see if that solves my power loss issue above 4500 rpm well that was fun so you have to use this little five mil here hex or allen or whatever you call that if this damn thing would focus sticker in that shaft there because this spins it's a ball and socket just like a, a ball joint and then your nut there you got to hold in place with 14 millimeter while you turn the shaft 
well, because I use this, um, to the right, clockwise. Turn that clockwise and then you hold that in place and that's how you get her off. And an impact like I used in some PB Blaster there. Wow, this will not focus. Shit pisses me off. Impact gun and PB Blaster is going to be your best friend on that, but that's how you do it. Well, I forgot to record, but I just did my very first pull and it did it again, but <laughs> I have another idea and you're going to think this is crazy, but wait till you see this. Probably won't work, but... Well, you should be able to hear the idol I was talking about. Ow, kick the brick. A little hard to do one-handed. Like, uh, holding the rear hatch up with your head while trying to stick a board in it. <laughs> uh, let's see, so, what was weird, just prior to hitting record on all of this, Remember I said I was messing with the mass airflow? Well, it's got a particularly dirty air filter in it. So I took that out and just ran around the block without the air filter to see if maybe that was causing an idle issue. And the whole time, I was flogging the crap out of it and no power loss. Put the air filter back in, pulled the sway bar link out, and now it's doing it again. So this doesn't seem to make sense. I have a hunch if this is it, why it may be it. I'll get to that, but let's see if that's it first. So, take the air filter out again. I don't think this is the issue, I just think it's like coincidences and whatnot. But we're running without the air filter and um, see if it's still doing it or not. Try again. Again, only because earlier I had it out and it was running perfect. Now, like me, you might be saying, how the heck? Well, like I said, remember guys, it's a vibration. I'm getting, I believe it's pulling timing because it's getting a false knock from that vibration. So how would taking the air filter out affect that? Especially considering, you might think, okay, well the, the air filter must be rattling around in there. Well, no, it's not. For one, I have it locked in place and it's not moving around and, you know, I had it installed uh, properly. Uh, but it's also, you know, these are rubber on the outside. So they're intentionally designed to not vibrate and they don't. So. Uh, the air filter itself isn't what's causing it, but uh, if it is causing it. So, let's go take it down for a spin. I'll be sure to record this time. And now if I don't have any power loss again without the air filter in there, I will show you what I believe the issue to be and why removing it changes that. But I really don't think that's it. But since it ran perfect earlier when I had it out, let's try it again. That is perfect and with no vibration. The vibration was gone with the air filter out. So, I still just think it's a coincidence, but I'm going to go eliminate that right now. Oops. <laughs> I usually don't get to see stuff like that because like where I live I'm surrounded by trees I wish it was more open so I had a better view one day one day if I can ever afford to get my dream property is definitely gonna have a better view so anyways let's try this again I'm gonna slow down I don't know if you guys can hear it on camera or not if it does do it but let's see if it does it again or not Starting second. You're going uphill, so if it seems slow, that's why. Yeah, so again, it's not doing it. Try a few more pulls, but so that seems to be the issue is having the air filter installed, which I'll show you why that's causing it if it is. Shaky tires I need to replace, which are coming as 
I said. looking actually like the sun's out <laughs> there and then you got this storm front here it's pretty cool so I'll try a few more pulls but that I mean unless we're facing extreme coincidences here that seems to be the issue and like I said I'll go over in just a second why that is So, let me show you what I think is going on. And it doesn't really make sense, but it kind of <laughs> it does at the same time. All right, you ready for this? <laughs> Airbox isn't bolted down. Now, I don't know how the heck that thing could vibrate so much that I can feel it in the floor, hear it, and it causes the car to pull knock, or excuse me, pull timing because it thinks it's knocking. Uh, the other possibility could be the sensor in there is just rattling the crap out of its brains and so it's causing all kinds of messed up readings to go through that would make sense too so now i will um accept responsibility for this i took the bolts out of there one of the numerous times i tore this thing down because um i left a bunch of stuff loose intentionally because you know possibility of having to tear it back down i don't put things in that I don't have to yet until absolute last moment in case I have to tear it back down, which I had to do like three times on this car due to the BS I was dealing with. Again, if you didn't catch any of that, go get yourself caught up, but it was not fun. And part of that was um, brand new part failure. One of the reasons I had to tear it back down again. So <clears throat> anyways, that's the only thing I can come up with right now. If it's not this, it's gotta be something else. It's crazy that I can feel it through the floor, hear it, and like I said, but so I'll get the bolts back in here, not just one. I'll get this thing bolted back down to where it's impossible for it to rattle around like that. And then if it doesn't do it anymore, then I know that that was it, which it really seems like it is now. Because like I said, both times I had the air filter out, it ran perfect all the way to red line. So unless it's one hell of a huge coincidence, then that's definitely what's causing it. Um, and it's crazy and dumb luck. I'm so glad if that is in the end it. So glad I I found that, and it was by dumb luck again because I was just you know trying to work on my idle and okay well maybe if the air filter is super nasty maybe that'll affect idle you know and then you can clean the mass airflow sensors and so messing around with that is the only reason I pulled that air filter out of there. Had it not been for that, I would have never discovered this. I would have drove myself crazy looking at everything trying to figure out what the hell's rattling. Would have never figured it out probably. And now the reason. Having the air filter out <clears throat> makes a difference because it doesn't matter. It, obviously, taking the air filter out doesn't change whether it's bolted down or not, but I think the added weight of the air filter is just enough, I, I'm guessing, to where it pushes down on this enough to where it vibrates on the frame or, you know, having that rubber in, in there and the extra weight, it's changing the resonance of it or whatever in the manner that it allows it to vibrate like that. So that's that's the only thing I can think. But it's really weird that... Both times I took it out and then it runs fine and it doesn't vibrate anymore. So as weird as that sounds, it, it seems to be the issue. Well, I spoke too soon. So I've been driving around for a few days without the air filter in um, on accident because I keep forgetting to put it back in. But it has been 100% flawless without that air filter in. I just put it back in. Um, I got this all bolted down now. There's not a single bolt missing and it's still doing it it's not doing it as bad but it's still doing it as soon as i throw that air filter back in even though i bolted the box down um the only other thing well there's two things like three things i guess 
either air is escaping or getting in somewhere like maybe the it's not i mean it, that rubber's still soft it is cracked so i don't know if it's like sucking some air in through the side and it's causing it to make like that sound i guess um i don't see any cracks or anything but there could be a crack somewhere maybe i'm not seeing where it's just sucking in through a little tiny crack and it's causing like that vibration and noise and whatever that then causes it to pull timing because it thinks it's knocking or unless it's just vibrating the crap out of the mass airflow there i know i'm sealed up up there i've already checked that multiple times um well not to mention up there i don't think it would have a difference whether or not the air filter is in there i mean it could because the air filter creates some restriction so if there is a hole somewhere maybe with that restriction in there is why it's causing it to like if there's a tiny crack somewhere we can't see it could be causing it to suck in with the air filter but not with the air filter out other than that i'm going to put these pins back in here i need to get those little plastic clips i don't think this thing's rattling around i mean when you close the hood the hood pins it down but I'm gonna try that. Um, so the only other thing left really is, like I said, the air filter is pretty nasty. It's a K&N, which I don't think you're supposed to use on this because of that type of sensor, because K&Ns have oil. If you get anything on that, it's done. <laughs> um, but it is like super nasty. So that's the only thing I can think. Either the at, the weight of adding that is, you know, initially I thought it was creating vibration, just the difference in the weight. This is the only thing that's left. Like I said, I'm going to pin that down, but so other than that, the only thing could be change into a new air filter. But I'd hate to spend 60, 70 bucks on another K&N for it to not work. So I'm, I think I'm at the point to where I'm just going to put like a open element filter on the end here, you know, like cold air intake or something like that. I might try like a cheapy 10 or $15 Fram um, just to see if having a fresh clean filter in it solves the problem. At least then I'll know. And then also, you know, for the time being, I can just drive around with a $10 filter in there if it's going to fix the problem. But I did it. Well, I got a new air filter in it. Got some buttons in there. And no more issues. So one of those things was it. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.